So, AMD Radeon 7. I got my retail card in. I ordered on the first day on release day and I got it in two days later, Saturday. And I did some gaming and testing and stuff like that. And first of all, yes, no matter what brand you buy, if you can buy one, um, it's the same card, no matter what. It's the same reference design from AMD, the silver car with the three fans, no matter what brand. Yes, it is a fast and good card, but I think it was a bit overhyped. Yes, it's a bit expensive, maybe a little bit too expensive, but I'll talk about pricing later. Can it compete to AMD? Yes and no, um, but it's a fast card, no matter what. Yes, it is a loud card, but not as loud as everybody claims and it's not as bad. And also remember the reference design from Vega 64, that was a loud card. Uh, but I'm sure other cooling systems will come up and it will get quieter, but it's all right. And no, it doesn't work in macOS right now, so no testing with Final Cut 10 and stuff like that. But I did put it into my Windows machine and um, yeah, I did some gaming and testing. And there is an, also a nice app for your phone to monitor your cards. Nobody really talks about. So let's dive in and let's talk about the Radeon 7. So yes, I got my card. It's the retail version from PowerColor. But as you can see, it's the same card for everybody. Nothing fancy in the box. I saw some uh, brands did put some stickers on the fans, but uh, it's the same card, no matter what. So yeah, it's quite expensive, around 700 euros. I paid like 750, something like that. Uh, prices did go up a bit um, and there was um, not really much in stock for many or all the retailers. I got lucky in the first 10 minutes, I got one, um, but right now they are sold out everywhere, I guess. And uh, some claim only 5,000 units for the, uh, for, the, for the whole world and uh, maybe 100 for Germany, I'm not quite sure, but it's basically sold out. In terms of pricing, um, yes, it is an expensive car, but if you compare it to other cards, I mean, everybody claims it kind of doesn't compete with the uh, RTX 2080, but the 2080 is at the same price, maybe even a bit more expensive. I have current prices now here somewhere, um, but um, right now, if you want to have an RTX 2080 Ti, you have to pay around 1000 US or even at 1080. Ti costs a thousand um, bucks um, and everybody claims that a 1080 Ti beats that Radeon 7. So yes, but it's more expensive, 200 more. Um, yes, this card should be a little bit lower price, but prices will settle, I think. So now with that out of the way, my initial plan was to put it into my uh, Razer Core X eGPU to use it with Final Cut 10 and stuff like that in Mac OS. But right now it doesn't work. I got onto eGPU.io and there's a whole thread uh, talking about that it is in beta, but it's not really in the released Mac OS version right now. But everybody hopes it will be soon and I do too. Um, I have a link below to a comparison between RX 570, RX 580 and the Vega up there. <laughs> there. Um, so for now I put it into my gaming machine uh, and did some gaming, some testing um, and it works quite well. I mean it's actually a 2010 Mac Pro with a Dual 4 cores or 8 cores, 16 threads, uh, Xenon CPU with 2.6 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM, not the fastest RAM though, but for workstation stuff and stuff like Lightroom and so this is a killer Mac uh, still. And uh, yeah, I put in initially, I had a 
uh, GTX 960 in there, which was a good card for the Mac and also for Windows, did some gaming there. No extensive gaming though, so only on holidays and stuff like that. Um, but I worked fine. For the holidays last year, so Christmas, I had the RX 570 in there and I was all right, um, but mostly on medium and I got okay-ish frame rates, I think, for my taste. I don't have any gaming monitor, so no G-Sync or FreeSync or stuff like that. So 30 to 40 frames per second are good for me. Um, but yeah, it worked good for, uh, I finished Far Cry 5 with that. It's all right, nothing to write home about. And now I put in this card and this is really a different game now. Uh, I played some Mafia 3, did a little bit more of Far Cry 5, the side missions, Ghost Recon, Wildlands. I played with the Radeon 7, which was good. And yeah, Mafia 3, I said before. So quite good, I get, I mean, for my setup, with my CPU, with my RAM, with my monitor, uh, 1440p, uh, I get like 40 to 50, sometimes up to 60 frames per second in high or very high settings, which looks really good to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a hardcore gamer, so other people might have different expectations, but for me, it's totally fine. And also the fan speed did go up mostly in menus or when the card isn't really working too hard, funny enough. For the most part is all right. As you can hear right now, the Mac Pro runs, it's also open. I have a hard drive running, my eGPO box. So nothing really too loud, I think. So this card also claims to be a compute card. So I did test this in Windows as well. I have Resolve up here right now. I have 4K footage from the Sony FS7, A7R Mark III, uh, DJI Phantom 4 Pro, which is really a really difficult codec and it plays perfectly smooth. No drop frames, even with color creating on there, sharpening and stuff like that. No matter what I put into this, it works good. No issues there. It's a different thing with Adobe Premiere CC 2019. So the latest version, I think. And yeah, doesn't really work well. With the FS7 and the A7R Mark III, 4K playback is all right with quarter resolution, but not perfect. And uh, with the Phantom 4 footage, it's a nightmare, it's not really good. Um, doesn't play at all, basically. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with Adobe, if they really prefer CUDA with Nvidia cards, um, or if it's my rig, my system, not quite sure, but I mean, it works perfectly good with Resolve, so not quite sure what's going on there. Yeah, so let's talk about something else. This little app here, this is, AMD link. Uh, nobody really talks about it. I used it to test and see and monitor my card during gameplay. Uh, it's really nice. It has all the data that you can put up on the screen here. You can also capture like your gameplay stuff and um, um, capture frame rates, average rates, high and low rates. And you also can uh, get screen captures or even um, like screenshots. And it's a really nice app for your phone and for the iPad and stuff like that. And you can tune your card. Right now it doesn't work. <laughs> for this card at least. Um, but um, I hope they will get an update soon. So in the end, is it fair to compare this AMD card to the latest uh, NVIDIA cards? Uh, yes and no. I think both cards have uh, good stuff and bad stuff and certain stuff is optimized for AMD and other stuff for NVIDIA. 
like AMD doesn't really work well with uh, Adobe it seems but CUDA does really good so yeah it's really tricky to compare those cards um, and yes it might be a bit late uh, but then again in the AMD world it's a good card and compared to other prices uh, yeah it's all right so it's not as bad as everybody claims and also don't forget just a few weeks ago the RTX cards came out and everybody was like eh, they're too expensive and ray tracing doesn't work and ah uh, they are performing less good even in 1080 is better than the 2080 and blah 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 so it's kind of odd to see people um, kind of forgetting and now the GTX and RTX cards are the best cards in the world since uh, they are so much better um, but yeah so this this is a bit tricky so yes both have good stuff both have bad stuff and yes most games work a little bit better with the GTX cards but maybe they are more optimized because they are more common so I mean but then other games work really well with the MD cards um, yeah so in the end right now it's hard to get a card anyways uh, they are sold out everywhere maybe prices come down as soon as third-party friends come out with cards I mean with Vega it took like one year or so uh, one can hope and right now I think for gaming yeah I mean both cards are expensive I'm not a gamer so I can't really get any recommendation out I will get back to you guys uh, as soon as the Final Cut 10 stuff works with Mac OS and see if this card actually can beat the Vega 64 so as soon as the Final Cut 10 stuff works I get back to you and we will see if this card is really that good if it's too expensive if it can beat the Vega 64 so let's talk about the driver uh, everybody claimed it doesn't work um, but most of the um, reviews out there are press driver reviews so they had the card way before it got released and the driver was not ready of course and it seems that it really was a press release driver issue and right now I have no issues uh, did not get any black screens games work good no restarts reboots whatever so really really solid for now what doesn't work is the tuning and stuff like that like overclocking underworlding and stuff like that it doesn't work um, so that's an issue right now but not really a big one um, but for the most part it really works solid no crashes no odd behavior with a dual monitor setup all good no complaints there so it works smoothly so the noise is all right it's not as bad as everybody claims and drivers are solid for the usual stuff so that is also good anyways all right guys that's it uh, for this video um, just wanted to talk about all that my experience with the Radeon 7 also if someone wants to use it in a Mac Pro and Windows Bootcamp, it works. No odd behavior, no scripts to run or extra software to install. Just put in the cards, install your drivers and you're good to go. Um, nothing special there. So this works. So as soon as the macOS stuff works, I get back to you and uh, I hope I will upload a few more videos about A7R Mark III and stuff like that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the Radeon 7 or any other stuff and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.